Hi, yeah, mate. James. Yeah, good, good. How are you guys? Oh, absolutely flying. It's good to have another Tigers man on board for the episode. <laughs> Been, been building up all episode now. I just wanted to get you on. I've seen you waiting there for us. So appreciate you hanging around and oh, jumping. All right, mate, I'm just studying in the background, but yeah, good day, Marcus. Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you, mate. Yeah, Quinn. Uh, Quinn tells me all about the the Richmond journey. Obviously, one of the, the bigger um, band channels, isn't it? I'd say Richmond wise, anyway. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to talk about Richmond, it's the place to go. That's for sure. Oh, mate. Honestly, the dynasty's probably played a massive part in that, but um. You know, obviously, this page has been around for 100 episodes now. So you've been through two dynasties, obviously, Richmond and Carlton round one to three. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yes, we love that. Every, it's been, it's been something special. <laughs> no, we're keeping it. We're keeping it. It's been something special. Um, yeah, having the Richmond dynasty has been a good time for us to do this as well. I've been able to sort of celebrate the wins and all that on here. But obviously, as well, a lot of uh, – how do you, one thing I wanted to ask about the Richmond journey is how do you handle a lot of the um, – there's a lot of nuffies on Richmond fan channel, all fan channels and pages, I should say. And there's a fair few that roll through the Richmond journey. And I see that you've got to moderate them quite well. How, how do you do it, mate? Because it's a lot of work. Honestly, I probably don't do it much anymore. Like when I first started, I was, you know, I just started the page while I was doing my Bachelor of Marketing and just thought I'd play around with social media and management and just like get some ideas about brand management through, you know, managing social media pages and probably spent way too much time back in the day. But these days I don't really spend too much time. Like, you know, I'll post something, just some thoughts up and just sort of leave it. And I've got a, a couple of other people now who sort of manage my group and I'm doing, I'm finishing my master's this year. So I'm pretty under the pump and I do both studying a master's and working full time. So both full time. So pretty limited with time, but I mean, at the start, when you're building a page, you know, that's probably when you're going to attract the most people who are coming and, trolling or whatever and you know i probably blocked most of them early on who were like really disrespectful and the other ones i just leave there you know they're just harmless they're all just there for a laugh and trolling each other so just let the community thrive i really yeah no, i love it i love it i think it's um it's, it's big with the fan channels i mean you mentioned the troll like how do you how do you how do you filter all that out obviously you're probably getting a lot of fans from other teams just just chirping up which which is what i said a lot of the carton stuff as well it's like other fans like to get involved like how do you sort of monitor that are you like reading every single comment or like how, how no, are you no sort of... way like yeah. there's no way i could do it like if i post anything now these days probably most posts get about 500 comments you know like I'd, that'd be a full-time job yeah. most people these days like i just won't even look at the comments most of the time or i'll just jump in when i when i'm taking a shit or something like to be honest then but like if if someone's really disrespectful most people will just inbox my page and say like this dude's like being really disrespectful and i'll just jump on and see what's going on but to be honest i'm probably going to give it away in the next few weeks just to some young journalist or something who follows richmond and you know just to give them a platform to really you know realize their dream and hopefully that can you know be the start of something for them and you know someone like you guys just give them a platform and hopefully something comes out of it for them that's a that's a, a really great thing you're doing there because you like you said you do have a lot of followers you get a lot of traction so something like that for someone up and coming would be huge that's a very generous thing you're doing there but let's get a little bit more into the tigers we'll dive into the season so far it's been an interesting one we started off pretty shaky then obviously we had those four wins in a row looked pretty good again and then the disappointing loss of the swans what, what are your thoughts on the season so far how do you reckon we've been looking it's hard to say i sometimes i feel like richmond just don't have a plan b and there's other times where i think maybe we do have a plan B, but we just like to back our players in too much. Like, you know, as an example, I said we should have switched Bolter and Gibkiss a lot earlier. But, you know, obviously we really want to back Gibkiss and give him the learnings early so that he can really develop as a player. But, you know, when the game's on the line, especially, you know, where we're sitting on the ladder, you're probably going to make those changes earlier. Um, so I suppose it's probably our own, you know, belief in our players that really hurt us and serve us well in the long term at the same time so it's a bit tough and then I, I feel like our development in VFL has really suffered since losing um, Craig McRae and, and probably Leper as well so we're probably just really trying to find our feet really yeah I think so I, it does look like that at times especially but Speaking of Josh Gibkes, how has he not had a rising star nomination yet? He's played some seriously good footy. And when we have moved him up forward, albeit it's probably been a little bit too late in certain stages of the game, but he's kicked a goal and he's gone up there and he's looked pretty confident. How how good's he been? 
I don't think I've, I'm probably a bit biased, but I don't think I've seen a better debut season by a key defender since the inclusion of the AFL. Like, Wiedering's a gun, but his first season wasn't that good and he didn't really have that much support, to be fair. But who's been a better key position defender than Josh Gibkes? I, I don't think, maybe the Konings, he, he's pretty close. Yeah, he's had a pretty good start to the year, I must admit. But, I mean, yeah, look, I'm probably biased as well, but he's just been so consistent. He hasn't really lost many one-on-ones. I think on the weekend, Todd Marshall maybe gave him a bit of a touch-up, but he's 18. That's going to happen. I think other than that, he hasn't really lost that many one-on-ones. Even against Buddy, he held his own. I mean, he kicked a few goals, but some are free kicks, a couple against Grimes as well. So I'm loving what he's doing at the moment. I mean, from a mutual standpoint, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's biased at all. I think he's been... um, sensational really when I mean, that yeah. Anzac Eve game that we went to I definitely definitely stood out there just his composure and his um and his hands as well for someone that's you know 18 19 years old is is pretty incredible and you know he's going up against um especially that Melbourne game as well some you know premiership players he's um yeah he's really holding his own and I mean yeah you, it's it's probably you know you, you try to think about a first year defender since you know you know the AFL started um it, it is honestly hard to say. Like Weedering, obviously, is is one of the standouts there. But yeah, you say his first season probably not as good as uh, Gibkes. So nah, I, I don't reckon that's as, as biased as what you think it is. Now, favorite there, Lucky has just chimed in as well. Gibkes already looks like a player that's three seasons in, and I do agree. He yeah. looks pretty confident. He just once he puts a bit more muscle on, a little bit more size, uh, not too much. I don't want him to lose his athleticism, but a little bit more, it'll be uh, it'll be very very good, no doubt. Yeah. All right, mate. Let's uh, let's do a, uh, some mid-year review questions for you. Um, what's been your game of the year so far? Probably have to be probably the game against West Coast was good for us to enjoy. But as a neutral game, I reckon it would have been the game that was just on Melbourne Collingwood. That was unreal. Good game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That, that was unreal. Collingwood have played a few in a row now, really close games. But I think that one probably just took the cake as well and if you're a Collingwood fan, you would have uh, you would have loved that um, finishing it off. So I like that one. Who would you say has been uh, your best player so far? Probably Baker or Jaden Short. Yeah, I know like you that. love Baker I, and Jaden. Short. I do love Jaden Short. Love yeah, both. I cop, I cop a lot from Marcus because every week we do our pressure point voting, and Shorty always finds his way to get in there. But I said to him, "You look at." It's always he, a one vote. The, 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 the meters gained. He always has thirty plus disposals. Is is a gun, and then Baker just. Throws his body on the line every week. I mean, he single-handedly wins his games at times. And, I mean, we did on the weekend against Port. And then the week before against Sydney, we lost, obviously. But the amount of times he smothered the footy and just got to those one, little one percenters that other players don't make the effort for. Um, yeah, I love Baker. Yeah, no, I'd, Baker almost is- make, I'd almost make both of them captain and vice-captain next year or the year after, whenever Grimes and Nankervis are happy to hand it over. They're, they're obviously Richmond men. You know, they've got a long career ahead of them with us if they choose to stay. I mean, you know, they represent what our team's about. Oh, 100%. And you got a best and fairest when you're in there as well in Shorty. So I don't see any reason why not. Who would, you, who would you have, Baker as captain or Short as or captain? Co-captain. No, you'd probably have Shorty. He's a bit older. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Baker yeah. is pretty young. So. Yeah, and I feel like Shorty's probably a little bit less of a bogan as well. So it might, might suit the media a little <laughs> bit more. But I do love what Baker brings as yeah. well. Have you seen him in his interviews? He's a funny character. Yeah, he is. He looks, he's always just full of energy, isn't he? Yeah, really, absolutely. Know, up and about. So I love it. Um Season prediction, mate. We we where the tie's gonna finish come season's end. Yeah, probably depends on injuries really. Like if we can keep Lynch and Rewald on the park and you know, relatively, you know, everyone down back on the park, I reckon we can finish between say eight to six. But if we cop an injury down back or up forward, we look pretty vulnerable and you know, obviously we struggled a lot without Lynch up forward, but you know, down the back, like we're, we're relying on Tarrant down back, who's, if any, we're going to get murdered this week, I reckon. He's If he plays on Mackay or Kerno, we're, we're, gonna, we're in serious trouble. I yeah, so. I, I don't I don't think he's got the athleticism or the speed to keep up with either of those two. I mean, Bolter, you'd imagine, would go back into the back line now with um, Lynch back, but... Yeah, but it's that interesting one in, on who in, Tarrant goes to, isn't in it? In round one, um, Mackay and Kuno were barely sighted. So it is that, true. Kerno, though, like relatively fresh into playing yeah, footy again. Yeah, that's true. That and was then, his only bad game for the season. Well, there you go. And yeah. then Mackay, you know, as good as been an off game for him. Or maybe yeah. we did shut him down. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it was really, but it didn't work though, did it? 
<laughs> bastard. <laughs> bastard. Well, actually, that's a good little segue. I don't know if you heard just before um, when we were speaking to Terry, we asked him, we need a, a, an idea for a bet between the two of us for whoever wins this week. We need a punishment for the other. Um, Terry suggested that one of us donates a three-game membership to a member of the other club um, that listens to our channel. What, any thoughts on what we should do to each other if um, which team, you know, whichever team wins or loses? I reckon next year, round one, the loser has to get the opposition's team face painted on their face. Oh, jeez, <laughs> that would be. I don't mind that. Uh, I don't mind. Yeah, and, let's do it. No, let's and, do it. And if just say Richmond win, I have to face paint it on you. Okay. And vice versa. Cool. Right. So that way, it could be a really shonky job. And it was just a yellow and black. Oh, I might do a little logo on it. Where you have to do a. Carlton logo. I might right. do a little logo on yeah, there yeah. somewhere. Okay. Bit of oh, eat them alive on the side. We'll see. Right. Things I, like I don't mind that one. That's <laughs> fun. I don't mind that. The paint. That's beautiful. I love it. All right, mate. Let's uh, let's do the pressure cooker before we uh, before we let you go. Um, if you had to delist one player on your team, who would it be? I feel bad, but it'd probably be Will Martin, only because Riley Collier Dawkins has got some sort of trade value. Um, I feel like Riley's been a real letdown, to be honest, considering he was you know, supposed to be the next Patrick Cripps. So he's the unlucky one for us. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. Cool. Well, he was the big body midfielder, a bit like Cripps. So, it was yeah. a high draft pick too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he was relatively. Yeah. So, yeah, no, nah, I agree with that one. Um, if you could add another player from another list, who would it be? Oh, it has to be Mackay. Yeah. Mackay and Kuno, that's, that's two of them getting picked tonight. It is. Well, I'd dominant... take either of them, to be honest. Yeah, yeah you I would. They are you? pretty good, yeah. Um, would you wear your team colours to a neutral game? Oh, like I would, but I I wouldn't do it though. Like, but I wouldn't be <laughs> against it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. I actually don't mind that answer. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, footy jumpers to games, yes or no? Been a bit of controversial topic lately. Footy jumpers to games. Yeah, I know some people say the Guernseys like these ones. I know some people say you shouldn't wear them as after when you're an adult, and other people say why wouldn't you wear them? So that's it's a bit of a weird, point up it's, it's a topic. Yeah. Yeah, I would, definitely. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I reckon we're 50 50 on that. It's a pineapple yeah. on pizza topic. I said it before. Yeah. Honestly, some people reckon you should. I don't know yeah. why you shouldn't, but anyway, I'm for it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind it. All right. And last one which team do you love beating the most? It has to be the Pies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pies that's, is good. That's, that's Pies are dominating that question tonight, aren't they? Yeah. I think for me, I mean, always the Pies. I think Carlton were always pretty high up there. The Bombers are probably my number one, personally. Um, but. I think after 2018, every time we beat Collingwood now, it's just it, it means a little bit more than what it used to uh, pre-2018. So for obvious reasons, which just slipped off my chair there. Far for obvious reasons. So, yeah, I no, love that one. Yeah. Well, I'm sure uh, after this week, Carlton, well, Thursday night, definitely. I know how much you guys hate us when, when those games roll around So and vice versa. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's going to be good. But now, nah, thanks for coming on, Chris. Really appreciate it, mate. And um, all the best for, for the Tigers this season. Not so much... Uh, next week, but uh, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we might. Well, we're, we're, we're going to be at the game, so we uh, we might have to bump into you uh, down yeah, the track. You boys for a beer, yeah, hundred percent. Especially if the Tigers win. <laughs> Done deal. Gonna uh, get one back on you. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All good, mate. All right, Thank okay. you for jumping on. Um, you no know, keep on all the stuff you're doing. You're doing some great stuff with the journey over there. So hopefully, continues and whoever takes over in the next week or so can you know continue your legacy and keep doing some good things. Done deal, mate. Thanks, boys.